Hey guys, welcome back to Draw with Sandy at the Little Artistic Nook. Today we'll be drawing this cute little antelope. To begin, we can start off by drawing out a small heart for our antelope's nose. Then you can extend a small line out from the bottom of the heart and then add in a little mouth. To create the muzzle, I'm just going to draw out a circular shape all the way around the nose and mouth. To make our antelope extra cute, I want her eyes to fall in line with the top of the muzzle. So first I'm going to draw out the right eye just by drawing out a nice oval shape. Then I'm going to trace over the top of the eye and extend out two lines to the right for eyelashes. Next we can draw in the first big circle near the top and a little heart underneath for a highlight and shade in the rest of the eye. And now we'll repeat those steps on the left side of the muzzle, first starting with the oval and this time we'll extend the eyelashes out to the left and draw in our first highlight, just a nice large curve at the top of the eye, a small heart underneath, and then shade it in. We're also going to draw in some cheeks. So coming to the bottom of the eye, draw out a curve that wraps all the way underneath and connects on the other side. If your cheek falls in behind the muzzle, just let the line break. And then I'll add in some little upturned eyebrows just to make her even cuter. We're going to draw out her head in the shape of a circle, but I want the top of the head to be a little bit further away from the eyebrows and the bottom to come pretty close to the underside of her muzzle. So you can start out by making two little dots and then connecting them, or you can just go for it and draw a circle all the way around the face. Next, we're going to draw in the horns, and I'm gonna draw them so that they're about in line with the eyebrows. So starting on the left, I'm going to curve a line up as if I'm going to draw out a letter C. And then I'm going to just round the top just a little bit. And I want the top to be more narrow, so trace the same shape or follow the same line and make it wider as you come back towards the center of the head. I'm going to repeat this step on the right, this time starting with the inside edge of the horn curving towards the center, rounding at the top, and then as I bring that curve line back to the head, I'm going to widen it out. We'll have the ears coming right out from underneath the horn, so starting on the right, I'm just going to draw a slightly curved line up towards the top of the page. And then from the end of that line, I'm going to make a point and curve my line so that it looks like I'm drawing a U shape back towards the head. Then you can come back to the end of this shape and we'll make a third line that mirrors that U shape tapering back to the head. We'll do the same thing on the left, starting right at the horn drawing a line slightly up towards the top of the page, creating a point and drawing in that U shape, and then coming back to the end of the ear to draw in the third line. And now we have sort of the ear folding over or just flopping forward a little bit. To map out the body, go ahead and draw some little guidelines that are coming out from about center of the cheeks. Then we'll come to the left and we'll draw out some fur as we make our line come down towards the bottom of the page and slowly start curving to the right. 
Next, we'll come back to our second marker and we'll draw out just a small curved line curving towards the center or the right side of your paper. For the first front leg, I'm going to draw down a vertical line that is pretty much in line with the right eye. You want this to start about halfway up the body, so just a little bit higher than the bottom line that you've drawn, the fur. A vertical line and then a small angle towards the left for the foot. You can make a horizontal line here at the bottom and then draw a second vertical line back up towards the body and you can widen it just a little bit up at the top. Then close off the front of the belly if the fur has not reached the leg. Then coming back to her little back body here, I'm just gonna draw out some more fur coming down towards the front of that leg. To draw out her back, I'm going to come to this short curved line and starting just a little bit above it, I'm going to begin drawing a curved line to a really shallow dip here towards the right and slowly bring it up and then round it to create her backside and begin drawing in her back leg. So as we curve over the top, we're going to keep going with that curve and slowly start to angle it towards the center once again. Try to figure out where the bottom of her front fur is and then we'll connect the back of the leg to that same spot across the page. Then draw a small angle out towards the bottom right corner and then angle it back down towards the left or center. Draw a small horizontal line for the bottom of her foot and then we're going to make a parallel slanted line back up and then we'll create a nice big curve here to create that upper part of her back leg. Now we need to close off the body. So coming back to the front leg, I'm going to start by drawing just from the top part here of her leg. I'm going to start drawing a line that curves slightly upwards so that I'm almost making her body look really thin at the back and we're going to add in the underside. So then we'll come back to that front leg and looking at where the bottom of her fur is here on her chest, we'll draw out another line from behind the leg and then bring it to connect with that back leg. We're gonna do one final line underneath and it's just going to follow that same shape so that when you go ahead to add in the color, you will have that signature marking on the side of her body and her top fur and then her under fur. Now we'll draw in the other leg starting here at the back, draw a slightly angled line to the right and then a longer line angled towards the bottom center of your page and close off the foot with a horizontal line. If there's a big space, you can add in the second side of that leg. And coming to the front, starting from underneath that chest, I'm going to draw down a vertical line towards the bottom of the page, angle it out towards that left side for the foot, and then once again, we'll just close off the leg, bringing it back up to the chest. To draw in her feet, I'm just going to draw an angled line that sort of angles down from left to right. And that way it kind of looks like she's got these cute little hooves on the bottom of her feet. To draw in her tail, I'm going to come to the highest point on the back of her body and I'm just going to draw a slightly curved line down towards the bottom of my page and just flick it out at the end. You can come back to the body Copy that same line and just have it meet at a point. And I'm also going to add in some little detail lines in her horns. So just coming back to the horns, I'm going to draw some lines and I'm just going to have them curved slightly. So a really super shallow curve. The curve is coming up and that's just going to help the horns look a little more rounded than if you just draw straight horizontal lines. Now we can go ahead and add in our setting. 
And I think for this scene, I'm going to just have her standing in a little puddle of water. So to do that, I'm just going to draw out a really loose shape just around her front feet. And then we'll just draw out the ground line all the way across the page, making sure to come in behind the body, underneath the belly, and just out also to the other side. To add in some movement in the water, I'm just going to draw some loose lines sort of around the bottom of her feet. You can keep them loose by just breaking the line, maybe adding a little dot or a little dash here and there, and it just looks like little ripples in the water. I'm also going to draw in some tall grasses, so just starting at the ground line, drawing a nice curved line up towards the top of the page, making a point at the top and bringing it back down. So you can cluster these long grasses in any way you like. They can be falling sideways, they can come in behind one another. So there's not too much to say in terms of how you need to draw these. Just have fun with it. And that is our cute little antelope. Thanks so much for drawing with me today, guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So until next time for another Draw with Sandy at the Little Artistic Nook, keep making art and keep smiling.